Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red to the Com video, we're going to be talking about Vega. Despite the fact that we don't know exactly a lot about the card, although we know a lot about the architecture, which is extremely weird, we know more about the architecture than we do the actual lineup that's coming out. Kind of odd, but there you have it. We have two sets of benchmarks and also two distinctive set of specifications with this particular GPU. Now, this first of all comes to us from CompuBench, and the, and the second set of benchmarks and specifications comes to us from Sysoft Sandra. So what happened is basically late last night, a bunch of you messaged me concerning the CompuBench, and pretty much I'd finished work, I'll just be honest. And then... About eight hours later, maybe slightly more, we had information concerning the Sys of Sandra. So another bunch of you messaged me concerning that one and Vega. So I guess first things first, let's just begin. So I'm going to start with CompuBench since I guess chronologically it makes sense. Now this device ID might sound somewhat familiar to you. It is the very same device back in January we saw running Doom at 4K. It is known as 687. F colon C1. Yep, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, just so we're aware, there is something that this has confirmed. It has 64 compute units, which gives a grand total of 4,096 stream processors, and we also have a maximum boost clock of about 1,200 megahertz. Now, the reason I say about, of course, is because boost and how that works, we don't know exactly with Vega, so we're just going to say 1,200. However, the base frequency is 1,000 megahertz. If you start doing the mathematics on that, it comes out to about 9.8 T-flops, slightly over, which doesn't sound an awful lot when you factor in that some of the devices are listed up to 11 T-flops. However, there are a couple of things we do not know. The first is, are these the maximum clock frequencies? I'm going to assume no. I say that with no evidence other than it doesn't really make sense to be the maximum clock speed. Secondly, these are early engineering. And thirdly, there are numerous improvements to Vega in terms of the architecture. These include pixel side of things, geometry, memory management, just a whole bunch of crap. And yes, that's technical. So if you were to say, oh, I don't know, there's like a 30 or 40% difference in raw T-flops between, let's say, the GTA, oh, sorry, the Vega C1, and I don't know what else to call it at this point, and compare that against the four, uh, sorry, 5.8, 5.9 of the 480. It's roughly about 40% difference. It's not that. It's not really that much um, of a comparison because T flops to T flops, it's like you know, different architectures and all that jazz. Regardless, these benchmarks do reinforce one thing, and that is this is faster than the GTX 1080. You might recall that being about 10% faster than Doom. Well, this appears that it's kind of accurate in that as well, and it almost appears that we're near the very end of the development process of the device. That isn't to say these are final, but they are telling us that they're getting closer and closer and closer. Ooh. Moving on to another device. This one is listed as 687FC3. So, first things first, typically AMD tape out with, let's say, Polaris 10 and then Polaris 11 being the lower end card. However, that doesn't always make sense. And generally speaking, it would be like they make the bigger card and then they go with the smaller card. What we do know is this also is listed as 4096 stream processors, which is because of 64 compute cores. However, we have a rip-roaring, astounding, staggering, a ginormous, a gigantic, okay, I'll stop now, 16 kilobytes of level 2 cache. I'm going to probably say that's not accurate, as is the 344 megahertz of the core. However, I am more inclined to believe 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory at 2048-bit. So in other words, we have two stacks of RAM, each one at 1024 bits wide, which of course makes a lot of sense, and each one running with 4GB. This means theoretically the card could have 16 gigabytes of 4096 bit, so it looks like we're having about 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth depending on the clocks, which we don't know yet. Regardless, once again, the performance of this is very impressive, and as you can see, it does very much take on the liner of the uh, GTX 1080 
and above. What does this mean? Unfortunately, we just don't quite know yet. Benchmarks of this nature are not the same as a game. And yes, we can run Doom until the cows come home. Unfortunately, Doom does lend itself, thanks to Vulcan, very well to, of course, the AMD architecture, thanks to asynchronous compute and all that jazz. So what I want to see is on a wider suite of applications. Unfortunately, and I don't know why I'm speaking with uh, pauses, but whatever. Unfortunately, we just don't have those. So it's kind of weird. Like, I'll just be honest with you all. I just bought a GTX 1080. And I don't feel bad about it because I bought it for the channel. Primarily because we need it. It's that simple. Um, if it was me and I was just kind of doing things by ourselves, I wouldn't have bought a GTX 1080. However, the GTX 1080 we have is a sample um, from a computer we're reviewing. So it's like, I can't just keep that. And I figure because AMD have you know, Vega on the horizon, you're probably going to want to know benchmarks. And I also need to know the benchmarks and how they can scale across multiple cores. And so basically I just bought a GTX 1080, right? On the other hand, if you are looking to spend the amount of money that a card like the 1080 or the 1070 costs, I would be tempted to wait, quite frankly, because at the end of the day, it's like the 11th of March as of the time I'm recording this. May is about the time we're expected to see Vega launch, which, you know, whether that's Valve time or not, you, your guess is as good as mine. Um, so if it does launch in that, it's like, are you happy to wait? Like, let's say it launches, and I'm going to make the assumption, as 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 should you, that it's going to be 20% faster for the same price. Does that bother you? Well, as I said in yesterday's video, or the day before, I can't remember which, to be honest, if you're already tied into NVIDIA's ecosystem in which case for example you've got a g-sync monitor with a reasonably nice resolution and let's say it's quite modern well if you want to buy vega good sir or good lady that's totally up to you but just obviously means that either you're not going to get the g-sync goodness or you're going to have to cough up uh, probably a second lung and buy another display that's totally up to you obviously i'm not going to tell you what to do with your money these cards, at the end of the day, are not out yet. So your guess is as good as mine what their final performance is going to be. And also, of course, you have to then wait for driver revisions. One of the problems that a lot of reviewers have, and I'm not saying it's their fault, because goodness gracious me, I know the struggle, is that drivers actually kind of update. So what I mean by that, and I know you're going to say, well, duh, let's say you have a card a lot of people reviewed the rx480 when it was launched and so a lot of folks have the rx480 in some benchmarks quite far behind the gtx 1060 whereas on the other hand later drivers have actually sh shook things up quite a bit now the problem is of course as a reviewer you can't keep going back to the old hardware to keep constantly reviewing and so what a lot of the times the reviewers will do is they'll have a flat install of windows I'm not saying all reviewers do this because that would be you know disingenuous but a lot of the time reviewers will have let's say a windows iso with well basically actually that's a load of bullshit okay it's a clone of a hard drive with no drivers or anything installed and basically they'll just install that with the games and it's just easy because that way they've got the revisions of the particular drivers they need and then assuming that you know things go pretty well they've got the same versions of the game and it gives them a nice test bench so it's kind of like just one of those things so we're just going to have to see how vega drivers improve the reason i bring this out or bring this up rather is because obviously with the 1080 it's been out for a while and video is still improving the drivers which is great you know i, I i'm really supportive of them doing that that's fantastic that's one of the benefits, of course, of having a competitive market. But obviously, when AMD released Vega, there's probably going to be something left in the tank. So those are just for you to, you know, kind of remember. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.